Greetings everyone, today I'm going to be showing you guys how to increase your FPS in Armor 3, sort of an updated one. The previous one, um, although it worked for me on my laptop, doesn't actually work for me on my PC. So, along with a few requests to update it, I thought that I would just go ahead and make a new video. This one does definitely work, I'm, there's no reason for it not to work. You will, you will definitely see a FPS increase by the end of today, but do remember that armor 3 is unoptimized, so, you know, don't get, uh, don't get your hopes up. I'm just showing you my specs here, um, as you could see I was running a Intel Pentium G3258 overclocked to 4.5 gigahertz, um, I have 8 gigabytes of RAM, a 500 gig, gig Seagate Barracuda and a 3 terabyte external hard drive, and I am running on Ethernet. For my graphics card, I am using a R9 280X, as you can see here, um, and I don't have the best specs in the world, but probably better than some of you out there looking to increase your FPS here. These are my DX Story settings that I use to record both pieces of gameplay, so just bear that in mind. I want this to be a fair comparison. Right, so let's get into it. The first thing you're going to want to do is to load up the run prompt by hitting Windows key and R and type in percent temp percent. Now don't worry about deleting all these files, these are literally just rubbish files, it's like it is what's left over on the plate after your dog looks up your dinner. Control A and delete all of those files and do the same with prefetch. Pretty much exactly the same, just type it in and delete everything inside it. After you've done that, make sure you delete everything outside of your recycling bin. Next, copy the Steam startup parameters for Armor 3. Uh, I will have all of this linked in the description. Load up the Steam client, right click on Armor 3, select properties, then click set launch options, and just paste in all of the parameters that you'll find in the description. Change amount of RAM you dedicate to um, whatever three quarters of your dedicated RAM is and if you have 8 gig because 1 gigabyte of RAM is equal to 1024 megabytes you do 1024 times 6 because that would be three quarters of 8 and just paste that in to the RAM. For CPU cores I have a dual core CPU so I would put two here. If you have a quad core CPU then you put four, if you have a hex core six and an octa core eight. It's all very self-explanatory. For X threads, if your CPU supports hyper threading then basically just double your amount of cores and paste that in. Um, however if your CPU does not support hyper threading uh, like mine then the amount of threads will just be the amount of cores you have. I only have a dual core CPU that doesn't support hyper threading so I have to put in two. Once you have finished typing in those two values, head to the link in the description for the memory allocator. Now this is a much more efficient one than the default that comes with Armor 3. Click the download button and it should start the download at the bottom left, it's a zip file. Uh, then just extract it to the desktop. Open up the Steam library file that's probably stored on program files x86. Now mine's a little bit weird because I accidentally made two files, but just find where Armor 3 is installed. Um, should be Steam Apps Common and then Armor 3. Now go into DLL and then open up the 7-zip file. Now go into binary and extract the DLL file into the other DLL file into you know, in Armor 3. Now we need to add the malloc equals tbb malloc uh, prompt into the startup parameters. So just copy and paste that again, it will be in the description. Right click on Armor 3, properties, set launch options, hit a space there and then just paste that in. Click OK, click close and we are all done here. Next up is to download Advanced System Care. Now a lot of people are saying this is a virus, it's it's not a virus. I use it every single day and I have not gotten a single virus from it. So just head to the link in the description. Uh, again, not a virus and 
Let me just show you how it works real quick, if I can minimize out of this. So, just load it up. And if it loads, here we are. So this is what it looks like. You just select all, get rid of this, select all and then click scan. And it should just go through your whole PC, clear up any junk files, fix your performance and boost FPS a little bit. So There's also the single turbo boost. It's like a little wizard that you have to go through when you first get it. But again, boost your FPS quite a bit. Got my FPS on my laptop from 50 to 80 on um, Battlefield 4 on a certain map. Goldmond Railway, I think it was. So actually a really, really good bit of software. Um, and it will definitely help you out, especially if you have a low-end computer. Now, installing drivers. This is essential, and there was a new driver that just came out, so I'm just going to run you through this real quick. So head to the link in the description. If you have an AMD card, your website should look like this. Go to manually select your driver. I have a desktop graphics card, which is in the R9 series. I have a 280X, so mine is going to be the 200X series. And obviously, I have Windows 8.1. You click display results, and it should load up. Now, this is the new driver that I was talking about, the Catalyst 15.7. Has done a big, big performance boost in a lot of games. It actually lists most of them, but I haven't actually played a single game that it hasn't boosted. So, just click the download there. It's like 500 megabytes, I think. I, no, it's like 300 megabytes, actually, for Catalyst. Um, but it does include virtual super resolution, which means that you can play in 1440p and 4K, which is awesome. Uh, 1440p runs great on this computer, I'll actually show you some 1440p gameplay of armor after tweaks. Uh, it's pretty much exactly the same for NVIDIA. Um, you just pick your graphics card, pick your software, and then download whichever one you want. Now, this is CPU core unparking. Won't work for me, or benefit me in any way, because I have a dual core CPU and Windows by default has two cores unparked at all times, but if you have a CPU that has any more than three cores, then this will help you out quite a bit. Um, if you would like a tutorial on this, then I probably am not the good man at the minute. I would recommend, in fact, I'll link a video down in the description on a tutorial on how to do this, but I will provide the link to this Codabag website, um, just if you want to download it and give it a try. But again, you need probably four cores or more for this to become beneficial and no it does not heat up your PC in any way. Next we need to set your priority using task manager. Now we're going to use Premiere Pro as an example here. Here it is, it's being a bit laggy because um, it's been up for a few hours. But you just head into task manager, you can do that by clicking control alt delete. You go into the details tab, click on, right click on Premiere Pro and set priority then to high. Now, if it's real time, then you'll get some audio issues. If it's above normal, still good, but high is probably the one you want to go for. So just click high and you'll be fine. Now, next up, we are going to go into computer, click properties, advanced system settings. Under the performance bit, you want to go um, into here and adjust for best performance. If your operating system is Windows 7 or earlier, then when you do adjust for best performance and click apply, everything will look like Windows 2000. Now to avoid this, you will have to check the option for maintain Windows layout or something like that. It doesn't it doesn't do that on Windows 8 thankfully because performance is already, you know, just so amazing. But if you're on Windows 7 or earlier than that, then it will look a bit weird. Now, I like to keep a few things checked, like uh, thumbnails, because that's really important when I edit, so then I can find um, video thumbnails and photo thumbnails a lot quicker, and also I like having nice smooth text and animations, so I like to keep all of that stuff, but again, it does increase performance if you just uncheck it all, but I would just recommend, you know, if you don't like the Windows 2000 layout, you can just keep that, leave that checked so you can maintain your current OS layout. Greetings! Now, we are in the main menu and we are going to be configuring some settings right now. 
You want to go to video. Now, as you can see, I have absolutely everything cramped up, cranked up to the absolute full, apart from the visibility. This doesn't really matter anyway. I mean, you can put it up to full and you only lose like 10 FPS. But this is where I'm comfortable at. It means you can still see 2,000 meters with a sniper and still see your enemy pretty clearly. So I'm not too fussed about that. That's a, that's a good enough distance. However, um, sampling, I would recommend keeping this at 100%. If you have a low end system, then go down to 88 or 83, but never below anything there, unless you're like on integrated graphics or something. But, I mean, Jesus Christ, it makes your game look horrible, so 100% or more is probably where you want to go if you have a decent system like mine. Textures, now this all depends on how much VRAM you have. VRAM is sort of how much, well, it's, it's, it's like RAM for your graphics card, video RAM, it's something like that. So if you have like 512 megabytes, which is what I think comes on most integrated chips, then I would go for low or standard. Um, if you have like an i7 integrated graphics, then maybe high, but again, it depends. You may have to meddle around with this yourself. Um, but obviously the lower you go, the more FPS you get. In terms of shadows, you can disable this or you can have them ultra. Low doesn't look very nice, and disabled actually, I guess, can increase your advantage over other people. Because, you know, you don't have to see them in a shadow. But, it's up to you. I just leave mine on ultra because I like to play everything maxed out. Particles are really nice in this game, so I just keep them on high. Again, lower you go, the more FPS you'll get. Terrain, you can put it to low, I guess. I like to keep mine on ultra because I'm a I'm, I'm graphics whore. I love graphics, so. Dynamic lights. Now, this is something that might tax your system quite a lot, same as HDR. Um, if you have a low end system, definitely put this on low. Same with HDR. Picture and picture quality. Now, this can affect low end systems as well with a. Um, pretty crappy CPU, so I would put that to disabled if I were you, but again, I'm going to go for everything maxed out, because that's what I recorded with before I did the FPS tweaks. So, display. Now, I've put mine to 1920 by 1080 because my computer can, again, handle it. It can also handle 1440p now with these fixes. It couldn't without the fixes, but... Maybe you can get 1080p if you have a lower end system, but if you want to run 1600 by 900 it doesn't look too bad on Armour 3, but anything below that starts to look a bit crappy, especially in full screen mode. Do run in full screen mode though, because it does increase your FPS by quite a bit. Interface size doesn't really matter, but disable VSync for God's sake. Just disable it. Now, in terms of post-processing, I don't like any kind of... Uh, any kind of blur, it's disgusting in a game. Depth of field, maybe, but uh, I'm still not a big fan of it in armor. Um, ambient occlusion can be quite taxing, so maybe you want to disable that, but if you have a higher end system, then it's probably worth keeping on maybe low. There isn't much that, there isn't that much difference between low and high. Shut up, seagull! No one likes you! Caustics, now this is like different lighting effects such as this, um, if you disable it, it will go, but I quite like it, because again, I'm a graphics off. Now, FSAA, this is full screen anti-aliasing, as it says there. I have mine on eight times. Definitely disable this if you're on a lower end system. Now, I haven't actually found that this does anything to your FPS, so I don't know about that. This post-processing post -processing, anti-aliasing, again, lower end system, disable it or put it to FXAA at the very at the very most, because it is quite taxing. Anisotropic filtering, if you have a decent PC enough to run some settings high, then this is something you are going to be wanting to keep at, an, at least standard, if not higher. Um, because it looks horrible if you just disable it. like. This is this kind of stuff, if you don't want know what this is, it's... If it was on disabled, then the textures would only show their full quality really, really close to you. 
the higher it goes, the further the quality of texture goes in the distance. It's kind of hard to explain, but just just type in anisotropic filtering on the internet and you'll see what I mean. It sort of like blurs out textures and it oh, it just looks horrible. So an anisotropic filtering is probably the most notable noticeable setting in games. Apart from that, that's generally all you need to know. Now, if you have any mods installed, um, make sure you disable them before you launch the game. As you can see, I have no mods installed. And that's pretty much it. Okay, so I just spawned in, and I hope you can see um, the FPS either in the top left-hand corner or at the bottom of the screen. Uh, it's getting around 50. High 50s. Low 50s. About there. So, I am recording. This software does have a 10 to 20 FPS hit, and... Oh, I'm getting shot. So, video. Everything is exactly as I left it. Completely everything. Looking over the whole map and getting more FPS. At 1440p. Alright. So, uh, let me head into the video settings and... Here I am cranking everything up as high as it can possibly go. Everything is going on ultra, or whatever it can go to. Um, that's picture in picture, ultra, dynamic lights, ultra. Head to display, you can see it's 1440p, um, FSAA, ultra, um, all trees and grass, CMA, MAA, even, um, anastropic filtering, ultra, everything, and Let's take a look at the performance. So, with absolutely everything on Ultra, seems 40 to 50 FPS. And that is absolutely everything maxed out. This is a similar scenario to what we had when we were playing at 1080p before the changes. Except everything's a lot more crisper. And obviously sharper and better looking and higher res. <laughs> but anyway, if you did enjoy this video guys, then do show your appreciation by tapping that like button. I love your face and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye everyone.